Oh hey, it's Wes. And today I was originally going to talk about electronic first curtain shutter and its effects. And I kind of thought that maybe that's just a little bit too nerdy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Nothing's too nerdy for this channel. But what I thought was I see a lot of confusion about what is banding in a sensor. And that's something that I would cover in an electronic first curtain shutter video. But banding isn't just one thing. There are a lot of ways to get different image artifacts in your pictures, especially now in our new mirrorless era, when technology is still evolving and still developing, and we're kind of still finding our place and how these things work. We're still getting used to how things work. I don't want to take too long leading into this though, so let's get started. We have three different kinds of banding that we can find in an image. Number one, let's talk about sensor striping, also known as PDAF striping. So what causes this? It is reflections or artifacts on your sensor caused by the phase detect autofocus lines or phase detect masking. When you have a mirrorless camera or even a camera that has a mirror but has phase detect autofocus baked into the sensor, you have pixels that have been replaced by phase detect points. Now the manufacturer will actually interpolate those points so you won't notice that those pixels are missing. In Canon, however, they use something called dual pixel autofocus where they use the phase difference between two pixels to decide how to focus. So they actually don't have to do this and so you won't actually have this issue on a Canon's mirrorless sensor. But moving right along, where is our problem coming from? Well, when you have a lens on a camera, the light doesn't just come in in the most obvious, the most ideal circumstance through the lens to the sensor. You can have something that's called lens flare, light bouncing around inside between the sensor and the lens. This is going to cause our PDF striping. In this circumstance, it depends greatly on what lens you're using. Some lenses, I'm going to speak specifically about the Sony system, because that's what I know, like the 8518 from Sony and the 5018 from Sony are especially bad for this because they don't resist flaring as well as some more expensive lenses do. I've also found that the 70-200 f4 is also a little worse for this. And then some higher end, more expensive, more modern lenses like the 135-18, it would be very hard to experience this. Now how often is this going to happen? I don't want to blow this out of proportion because after hundreds of thousands of captures on Sony mirrorless bodies, personally, I have probably had one single picture that I would consider to have been ruined by this. And on either side of that picture that I took, I had several usable frames, so it wasn't actually an issue. But there is one that I had to delete that I would have otherwise used because I thought it was the best composition of those frames. Generally speaking though, these lines are going to appear in the area that your lens is flaring. So personally, I don't like to have the subject's face completely washed out or the subject itself washed out by the flare. So when I get those lines, they are very small. They are one pixel wide. And so I can just use some blur to blur them out because they're already in a blurred section of the image. Doesn't bother me much. In total, the number of images that I have had with this effect that I've had to correct is probably around 20 to 25. So again, that's out of hundreds of thousands of pictures that I've taken over the last few years. So again, this does not come up very often. It will come up more often depending on which lenses you're using and how you shoot. I like to shoot right into the sun. I've heard some people say, oh, I can't switch to Sony because I hear you get this when you shoot into the sun. Doesn't always happen. Actually rarely happens, but it can. I'm not saying that it can't. So something that you have to be aware of. This can also happen on other mirrorless bodies like Fuji's and Olympus. Pretty much anything that has phase detect built into the sensor like this. Newer models like the A9 and A7 III, they have a lot of phase detect points, over 600. And so they can be more prone to this effect because there are so many lines on that sensor communicating with the phase detect points that can light up when a lens flare illuminates them from the wrong angle. How do you avoid this? Well, there is a program that someone created that will go through a compressed RAW file 
and eliminate those artifacts. That's one way of doing it. It's a pretty solid way, but it's nice to not have to fix it afterwards. Other ways, you can just be aware of how your camera and lenses work. If you're shooting straight into the sun, try to avoid the problem lenses. Try to avoid creating a composition where the lens flare is going to be covering up your important subject. And then, if you do get those PDAF bands, they're easy to deal with. You can just smudge them right out. Because again, they're only one pixel wide, very easy to smooth. So that's that. Again, not a huge issue, but it's something that can come up and I don't want you to confuse it with the other things we're going to talk about. The next one, and probably one of the more commonly known ones, is electronic first curtain shutter flash banding. Whew, that's a lot of words. What is that? Well, a very, very brief rundown on what electronic first curtain is. When you're shooting in high speed sync or HSS above your camera's sync speed, the shutter isn't just closing down over the sensor, it's creating a gap between a lower and an upper shutter that wipes down across the sensor to reduce the amount of light coming in. Because your shutter can't actually move at 1 8,000th of a second. That's way too fast for something mechanical to slide around. reducing shutter shake and reducing wear and tear on your shutter is electronic first curtain shutter. Instead of using two shutters, it eliminates the first one and just electronically clears the sensor before wiping the second one. Now that's great and all, but the electronic shutter doesn't move at the same speed or in the same way as the mechanical shutter. It reads the sensor in a bunch of swipes, and so it'll take this block, that block, that block, that block. It's not nearly as an organic process and it won't even do it as quickly as the mechanical shutter. So the two aren't lining up. When your flash is firing and it's high speed synced to your camera, it's actually going to pulse as that shutter's coming down the sensor. But because of that, it's going to line up with a mechanical shutter, but not the electronic shutter jumping across the sensor. And so you'll end up with dark bands down your photo in some circumstances. In what circumstances will you get this? You might be surprised to know that this isn't just a mirrorless camera thing. A lot of modern DSLRs can shoot in mirror lockup mode or live view mode, and they have an option to use an electronic first curtain shutter. It can also affect those cameras. And of course, most mirrorless cameras these days have electronic first curtain shutter turned on by default. So what do we do to mitigate this? Some people would say always turn off electronic first curtain shutter, never use it. I wouldn't go that far. It reduces the wear and tear on your shutter, it makes your shutter faster, it makes your camera quieter. Those are all great advantages. I would just say, once again, be aware of your camera and how it works, read the manual, get used to it, and when your shutter speeds get up that high, I would suggest make a shortcut in your menu to easily turn off and on electronic first curtain shutter for when you're using flash. You can check out some of my setup guides for the A9 and the A7 III to show how I set up my camera to make it easy to get to that. Also, the intensity of these bands will increase or decrease depending on how powerful your flash is in relation to the ambient light. And additionally, some flashes cause this more than others. Something like an 8200 or most on-camera flashes will create a quite a bit of this because they don't have a lot of power and when you go up into high-speed sync territory, they have trouble producing those pulses. But then again, something like an 8600 Pro has very little of this because in most circumstances, it has no difficulty producing very long, bright pulses to match the high-speed sync. Other ways to prevent this would be just shoot with continuous light, not always an option, or an LED-based flash like a Godox FV150 or 200, or any of the roto lights that have a built-in flash. I know, that's not always practical. So again, just put on your full mechanical shutter, turn off the electronic first curtain shutter when you're shooting in high speed sync to avoid this problem. Lastly, a similar effect, but not the same, would be artificial light banding. Well, you might be surprised to know that again, this is not just a mirrorless camera issue, or even just a silent shutter issue. This can affect any camera. It's just that silent shutter can increase your odds of this happening. So artificial light sources, like fluorescent bulbs, LED bulbs, 
even really old bulbs like uh, sodium vapor, anything other than incandescent can have what's called a pulse width modulation. Basically that just means they turn on and turn off again without you actually being able to see that happening. It's very common with LED stage lights as well. It's exploiting kind of a gap in our awareness that smooths things out, just like when you watch a movie that's a 24p, a lot of the time you don't realize that there's choppy motion. I realize it. That's why I shoot at 60p. And so, by using this hole in your awareness, light manufacturers can save money by making their lights blink. Ugh, it's so annoying. Most lights that are going to be doing this will be blinking 60 times a second because they'll just run the AC power through the light in one direction blip, 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 and it will blink 60 times a second. That's fine. It can actually cause some people to have migraines and sometimes you can see the blinking in the corner of your eye. There are other lights that will use pulse width modulation to control the brightness of the light. So at full brightness, they won't blink at all. But at any reduced brightness, they'll start flashing. Which seems kind of crazy, but if you have seen any of my older videos, you might be familiar with this effect. If I switch my lights to orange, while I'm looking at them, I can't see this with my eye, but it's going crazy in the video. That's because in orange, the red is lit up, but other colors are joining it but very dimly to create the orange effect. I'll switch that back to uh, white before anyone has a seizure here. Some lights, however, will do this all the time. So some venues, some hotels, I have had situations where you can't take a picture of any kind because those lights are continuously flashing. Well, how does it manifest? Again, a lot like electronic first curtain shutter flash banding, it'll just be dark bars across your whole picture. But a lot of the time, it'll just be in the background because sometimes your subject will be lit by something else. So it's kind of weird, kind of confusing. What can you do about it though? Well, you can use an on-camera flash to try to punch out that light, but sometimes you still end up with the banding in the background. In a long-term solution, you can talk to venue management and tell them to buy better light bulbs. Incandescent is an option, but there are LED bulbs that don't do this as well. I wish it was more obvious which ones did and didn't, because it's kind of touch and go deciding which bulbs are going to cause that or not. Now in silent mode, this is made way worse. Because most cameras, when shooting in silent, they're using a full electronic shutter, but it takes about a thirtieth of a second to go down the frame. Whereas most mechanical shutters take between one one sixtieth and one two fiftieth of a second to cross the frame. So one light pulse can sometimes just disappear. Whereas with an electronic shutter, they'll see a few pulses sometimes. Not all electronic shutters are created equal though. The one in the A9 can cover the entire shutter in about 1 1 60th of a second as well. And there are some electronic shutters that are even slower than 1 30th of a second. So just again, be aware of your camera. Using electronic first curtain shutter can also increase the incidence. So generally speaking, if I'm shooting in silent, I will take a picture, inspect it carefully with the ambient lighting. If I see any banding, I'll switch on my basic shutter with electronic first curtain shutter. A lot of the time that'll get rid of it. But if it doesn't, I switch to full mechanical shutter and see if that gets rid of it. Most of the time it does, but not always. And when it doesn't, then you really have to start thinking of ways that you can alter the light, bring in some natural light, some of your own artificial light to fix that problem. So photography, it can be complicated. And I know that I've probably complicated things further, but just think on these things and be aware of how your camera works and be aware of the different kind of lighting situations that can negatively impact your photography. Most of these circumstances, they don't come up that often, honestly. 95% of the time, none of these things actually matter to me. But it's great to be aware of them so that if you do run into a problem, you know how to fix it, you know how to mitigate those problems. A lot of people say, never chimp, look at your photos later. That's not really a great idea. Whenever you get a chance, take test shots before you commit to your pictures, especially if you're doing professional photography. Take some pictures with your finished scene, look at them very carefully to make sure you've got it down. Because these problems, as a whole, can affect any camera from time to time. 
So don't let yourself get tripped up. Don't accidentally destroy an entire photo shoot just because you didn't slow down and evaluate your situation and see if your pictures were really turning out the way you want them to. Until next time, you call that wedding venue and you tell them to replace those stupid LED bulbs and go take some photos.